Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Color Mixing with Chris. And in this video, we're going to keep in tune with some of the candy spraying that we've been doing. We've gotten a lot of good feedback from you guys, so we're going to continue on. And today we're going to talk about how to mix and uh, spray a color that we are calling Blueberry. So we'll get right into it. I'll show you guys here. This is, to my right, our Carib Blue candy. That's neat, meaning it's straight, clean candy right out of the bottle over our 6013 Silver Sealer. And then to the left of that is our Ultraviolet. So that's the Ultraviolet candy too, uh, over Silver Sealer as well. And this color kind of fits in right in between those two. So it's a little bit darker than our Carib Blue, but it's not as dark as our Marine or our Midnight Blue. You guys are familiar, we have two other blues in the line. Those are really, really deep, deep blues. Um, and, and not quite as purple as our Ultraviolet. So it kind of fits, kind of fills that gap between the two. We think it's kind of a cool color. It's got a nice purple side cast to it too as well. So it looks really cool. This is uncleared. Uh, this is just four coats sprayed over. So we are going to mix that up and I'll talk about the ratios and actually I'll talk about how we came about this color. So the base of this color is our Carib Blue candy. And the, the sweet spot that I found is a four to one mixture to our Sunset Magenta. So four parts Carib Blue candy to one part Sunset Magenta. And that's just enough to kind of give us that, that purpley kind of nice rich look without going too purple. Um, and if you guys are familiar with these videos, we kind of have our standard uh, operating procedure here with our bases. These are our kind of our standard uh, every time we've been doing these candy videos. So we have our metallic gold, we have our silver sealer, and then we have our charcoal metallic, five, three, uh, 359 charcoal metallic. So those are kind of the standard, kind of gives you a nice color spectrum in terms of a, a warmer with the gold, really bright and cool with the silver, and then a dark value with that charcoal. So we are going to grab a couple mixing cups, and uh, I'll show you guys the ratio. We'll talk about mixing it, and then we'll start spraying in some candy when we get back. Hi right, guys, welcome back. Got my mixing cup and uh, some 4050, which is kind of important to do this mix. We're gonna go ahead and, and start mixing up some candy. So real quick, I just kind of want to do a, a recap. Um, I mentioned the, the bases that we have. I just kind of want to show you guys each one of the metallic. This is metallic charcoal. This was put over um, sealer gray. Uh, you could put it over black as well, or white, it actually covers extremely well. And, and the underlying sealer really doesn't affect this color because of the coverage strength. So really, it, can, it, it looks the same over any, uh, any base color, essentially. So for the silver, we use our silver sealer, 6013 silver sealer. That, again, that's the same exact scenario. That covers extremely well over basically any color. Uh, it's a great ground coat, works excellent for the candies. If you've seen the candy videos we've done before, that's kind of like our perfect clean metallic base. It's kind of right general, right in the middle of the road in terms of, of a clean, you know, there's, there's no color to it. It's really bright silver, nice and clean. It's got a nice glitter effect to it and it looks really well with any of the candies. Uh, and then we have our metallic gold. And for the metallic gold, um, for the brightest effect, you should go over a lighter uh, sealer color, a lighter base color. So for this particular uh, instance, I just actually went over sealer white. The metallic gold does cover extremely well over the white. Um, there's a couple times we've done other videos too where we'll mix a yellow and, and the white together, kind of create like a, an off, like a tan kind of a color. That works really well too, but just over the white is fine uh, in terms of the coverage. So, and again, the gold, the metallic gold, that's a, a very clean gold and that's going to give you that true what everybody considers a real candy apple. So anytime you hear candy apple, realistically in the industry, that the, the true sense of that candy apple is over a gold uh, base coat. So that's covered. We are going to move on to actually mixing our, our blueberry color. So like I said before, I ended up finding out that four parts carob blue to one part sunset magenta uh, is kind of right where we want to be in terms of that tint strength. So go ahead, I got a mixing cup in front of me and just going by the ratios, we have, we'll go right to here, to my four parts, right there, to one part of our sunset magenta, right to there, to the one. And then that overall mix, and one thing too is when you guys are using our candies, strain them. Can't stress this enough. Um, a lot of times there's dried candy kind of in the, in the top of the cap and the bottle itself and just sometimes from sitting, it's just, it's, it's a very good practice to strain the candies and for that you want the, the finest um, strainer possible. This is a 125 micron strainer, really, really, really tiny mesh. You can kind of barely even see through that, but that's what you want. These candies are so thin, um, if you are, Familiar with candy, as you see, it is 
there's really no body to it at all. It really is like a dye. It's, just, it's like a food coloring. So, um, and because of the fact that these will kind of show everything, any dirt, any kind of particles, any kind of dust, any, any kind of contamination, it's, it's the first step in making sure this comes out extremely clean is making sure they're strained because anything that's in there is just gonna kind of get magnified when you start spraying the candy and it's, it's not gonna go away. You can't cover that. There's no pigment in here that's actually gonna make it essentially disappear. So, strain your candies. Uh, so what I have right here, I have a four to one mix and then I'm going to add uh, my 40-50 uh, and I'm going to make that so it's a six to one mixture. So six parts 40-50 to one part of this candy mix. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Go. So it's a lot more 40-50 versus the candy. Right to there. So that's right about six to one. And then we're going to really mix this really well. That's the key to getting this all to work together is, is just a nice, smooth mixture. You don't want to see any kind of, it's hard to see, I know, because I put the candy in first, but any of the 40, 50 on the sides of the cup, you want to make sure it's all completely mixed together. So we'll go ahead and mix that. And then the, the trick is, too, is to let this sit for about 10 to 15 minutes before you go to spray. So for this particular application and what we're doing, at a six to one mix with a larger spray gun, I'll probably use a full size gun to do this. Um, it's not necessary to reduce. I have, see that flow? That movement off the stick, it's nice and smooth. It's not really heavy where it's really going off the stick slow and it's not dripping like the candy was when I sprayed it or mixed it initially without the 4050. So that's kind of what you want in terms of the paint consistency. You just want a nice kind of a silky smooth flow right off the paint stick. Um, so for a larger spray gun, you're not going to need to reduce this. Um, if you're using a smaller tip size, small airbrush, um, you're going to want to reduce it. And, and generally speaking, usually 5% uh, is, is a good spot if you're using an airbrush. Uh, all the way up to 10, 10 is kind of the, the cutoff. The last thing you want to do is over reduce this paint to the point of it, it doesn't hold. So the candy is so thin, you need that, that 40, 50, that carrier, the vehicle, right, to get your candy to your, your substrate. And, and if it's too thin, when you're spraying, and again, the key to spraying a candy is a really nice, medium wet coat. Um, if it's too thin, it doesn't hold together, and then when you spray it, it just kind of skates out. We call it skating out, it kind of scatters, almost like you're painting over grease. You know, they have like fish eyes everywhere. Um, so it's really key to have the right paint consistency in order for you able to spray a nice, even coat to maintain that film of the color rather than a speckled appearance. The last thing you want to do is have uh, the transparency affected by like a dotted uh, matrixy kind of look of the candy. The whole key of the candies is building, building that color from the bottom up and creating that depth, but you need a nice even film of candy. So making sure it's totally mixed, making sure your reductions are right, and, and the consistency of the paint is, is really key in spraying these candies. So we're going to go ahead, we'll let this sit, I'll get my gun set up and get the booth running, and when we come back, we'll spray some candy. Hey guys, welcome back, ready to go, paints in a cup and a gun. Uh, it's an LPH 400, I'm spraying right at uh, recommended pressure, which is 16 PSI, so same thing, nice even distance, 75% overlap, so really, really tight overlap. Uh, this is probably overkill for, for this piece, but that's fine. Um, yeah, so basically that's it. If you guys have seen the other candy videos, really, really key part is being consistent with your gun to your panel. You don't want to spray the top like this, you want it to be like that because you, you want a nice even fan hitting, you know, parallel basically to every angle of your part. So we're gonna go ahead and do coat number one. We'll start with the gold and I'll go right through the gold, silver, and the charcoal. So this is coat number one. We'll probably do four coats. Guys, welcome back. We are totally done spraying candy. We'll kind of go through these real quick. Uh, this is the charcoal metallic. We'll start with the darkest one there. That is four coats 
And these are before clear, so these aren't cleared yet. So when we, when we break, I'll go ahead and put some, uh, some clear over the top. But this is four coats of the blueberry over the charcoal metallic. And then we got four coats over the silver sealer. So you can see just definitely a, a tonal change for sure. Obviously over a darker base, it's gonna be darker. And this is the one that's pretty cool. This actually came out to be more of a teal color and that's over our metallic gold. So that's four coats. These are all four coats over each uh, base coat and uh, that's over the gold. So really changed that color quite a bit. Now, before I go ahead and clear these, I'm gonna spray a 2K clear over the top of these. If you guys are seeing some of the other videos, we do have a, a high gloss top coat, the 4053, but we find it, it just, uh, the 2K works a little bit better when you're spraying over candies. Sometimes the candy has a tendency to kind of bleed into our 4053. So we kind of recommend a 2K just for that really maximum kind of holdout, the color shine, the shine and the holdout. So um, one thing I wanted to talk about real quick here uh, is something you can kind of do to, uh, kick this color up a little bit in terms of, of that really cool effect. Um, we just released this year six new uh, Wicked Flare colors. So what we're going to talk about is just color keying a flare color. For instance, this is our Wicked Flare Blue Violet, right? So this has a blue violet flip. We're going to actually do a coat of this, or two actually, over the top. So I have the blue that I showed you guys earlier in the video. It's the same exact blue. Uh, that we, we sprayed here, but I'm going to take this one so we can see the difference. I'm going to put a couple coats of that flare blue violet over the top. So now it's going to kind of just give a soft kind of a pearl effect, but because it has that color shift, it's going to kind of bring out both tendencies, right? We blended two candies here. We had a, a sunset magenta and a, a blue and a carob blue. So we have a violet and a blue. So it's going to kind of key well, really, to both, both ends of that color spectrum. So, and again, this is not real color saturation we're trying to spray two to th maybe three coats max, and it's just a medium coat, kind of a, a, an effect coat, if you will, like a control coat. So we'll go ahead and I'm gonna mix it up like I usually do because it's a pearl color. I really like mixing it right around 25% of the 4050 in with my paint. So about four to one, four parts to one part, three parts to one part, depending on what it is you're doing. That seems to be a good ratio. I like 20 to 25% just helps the sprayability and really helps kind of elevate that pearl a little bit, that effect flake. So we're gonna go ahead, I got some in the gun, I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple coats over this blue here, and uh, this will be over the silver, so we'll really be able to compare what that does to uh, this, this uh, basically this neat one, this clean one over the silver sealer as well. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, spray a couple coats and we'll see what we got. All right, guys, welcome back. Clear coat is totally dry, so we'll take a moment and just kind of recap this. Um, if we can, we'll get outside. It's kind of rainy, gnarly out today, so we'll see if we can get a good sunny day to really show these colors. But in the meantime, we'll use our fake sun. So uh, real quickly, just to kind of wrap everything up, we have in front of me, I have the two samples that we showed in the beginning. Remember, that was the carob blue and our ultraviolet. So two totally different colors, and, and we wanted to just kind of show the contrast between uh, what we mixed, the blueberry, and so there's blueberry versus carob blue. And these are all over silver, silver sealer, right? Four coats. And this is the ultraviolet. So definitely darker than the carob blue and definitely more blue than purple in, in terms of the ultraviolet. So we do have a deep purple, which is obviously this is going to be way more blue too. So uh, again, I'll kind of just show these, if you will. This is four coats of the blueberry over silver sealer. And we'll move on to... The dark, so this was the same blueberry over that charcoal, that metallic charcoal, four coats as well. Pretty much the same color, just darker, just a darker version of it. Again, that, that metallic charcoal is a great uh, darker, if you're looking for a little bit deeper, darker kind of a, a color base because it is so clean. It's just a really clean metallic. Uh, and then the, the last one here over the gold, big difference in color. You know, obviously because the gold is yellow and you have blue over, it's gonna go more green. So this is kind of a cool, Kind of a turquoise, kind of a teal color. And again, this is four coats. And then while I have it out, I'll show you guys, if you remember the last part where we sprayed a couple coats, kind of a drop coat of our flare blue silver. So in direct sun, this kind of has just a metal, a mini metal flake kind of effect. It's got a lot of glitter to it, kind of like our hot rod sparkle. 
Um, but out of direct light, it kind of has a, a pretty cool purple kind of side cast. Right, right now in, in the direct light, like most of our flares, in direct light, it kind of has that, that bright, one color is a little more prominent than the other. So you're seeing more of the, that blue flake, but it, it does have a really cool kind of a purple kind of side cast. And again, that was color keying, essentially color keying that flare color with an underlying candy or even just a base coat color. Solid color would pair very well in terms of using it as like a, a mid coat before you apply your clear coat. So color key, you know, just using whatever the, the color here in this case was the blue violet, so we went with blue. So it, it works really well. Kind of like we talked about sealers, color keying our sealer to our, our base coat that we're gonna apply. So uh, I think that wraps it up real quick. We kind of go over the, uh, the mixtures, right? So we had Kara Blue, and Sunset Magenta, so we did four parts Kara Blue to one part Sunset just to kind of get that purple kind of look to it. And then once that was mixed, we went six to one with our 4050. So six parts 4050 to one part of that candy mix, and we did four coats. Uh, if you're using a big spray gun, typically with that ratio, you're pretty good right out of the gun. Uh, if you're going to use an airbrush, smaller tip size, generally a 0.5, just because the, the 4050 is a little bit thicker in viscosity, um, you're going to reduce 10, 10 to maybe even 20%, depending on what it is you're doing. But that's kind of the sweet spot. We don't really want to exceed uh, 10, 20% in, in a spray gun or airbrush and spray gun, just because it will kind of skinny out that product. You really want that to hold together nice in a nice even film form. So I think that wraps it up. We'll see if we can get these outside, grab some sun. Uh, and uh, we'll kind of just do a quick review outside so you can see what they look like. But I think that's about it. So for Create Text Colors, I'm Chris Arpin. This is Color Mixing with Chris, and we'll see you guys next time. Hey guys, outside, got a beautiful sunny day here for us so we can really see what these colors look like. Uh, real quick, just want to show you, this is over the gold. This is actually the, uh, the blue over the silver with the, uh, the flare blue-violet mixed in. So you can see side by side, much larger flake in terms of how the, the overall look, but it does have a bit more of kind of a purple side cast. It's kind of hard, to, again, to kind of catch it outside in direct sunlight, but it's got a really cool look to it. This one right here is the, the blueberry over silver sealer. And then last, we have, I just want to put those two blues next to them. This is the blue, same blue over the charcoal metallic. So same thing, pretty much a, a really nice color, just a darker effect in terms of that, that base. So that charcoal does a really nice job of a clean, kind of a dark base coat to really shift that color. So I think that wraps it up. So thanks again for checking us out. Create Text Colors, I'm Chris Harpin, and we'll see you guys next time.